So today I'm in the studio with Richard Gelbert from Imprint Guitars uh, and recently I uh, actually commissioned Richard to build a custom guitar for me. Uh, this one's called the Metropolitan. Uh, you've probably noticed that the, um, the shape of the guitar is slightly similar to a, another famous style of guitar. Um, but um, when I was chatting with Richard I, I had a, um, an idea of what I wanted, something different to the Telecaster I normally play live. and um, yeah, something a little bit quieter. Um, so I'll hand over to Rich to um, tell us all about the specs that he put together uh, just for me on this guitar. Thank you Chris. So uh, this is the uh, custom guitar that I designed for Chris, um, largely according to his whims. Uh, as he said, the uh, body shape is somewhat recognisable. It was my own take on a uh, traditional offset by a well-known manufacturer beginning with F. Um, I lessened the uh, curvature on it slightly to make it a little bit more um, towards a conventional body shape. Um, the main just focus of our design discussion was around the sound he wanted out of the guitar, which, as I said, was moving away from a traditional single coil sound of a Telecaster uh, and producing something which have a bit more definition and uh, nuance to it away from that. So I suggested to Chris the use of uh, a pair of mini humbuckers, uh, which I felt would be a co compromise between a single coil sound and a traditional humbucker sound. So giving him a bit more depth and dynamic range, but without taking it fully to the base extreme. Um, then in the selection of the bodywoods, we also considered uh, how we could come to a compromise between the traditional single coil and humbucker sounds. So we've got mahogany in the body, which is what uh, a well-known company beginning with G frequently use. And we have maple in the neck, which is what the same F company use in there. So we've got something of a marriage of um, two traditions, bringing together uh, hopefully some of the features of both, which define those sounds and bring us somewhere into the middle ground. And it was a bit of a difficult brief because um, I wanted a guitar that I could play live, um, that I could thrash around a bit. Uh, I wanted something that wasn't going to be as twangy and aggressive as uh, the Telecaster I normally play. But I also wanted to use it for studio work, um, and so it had to be quiet. Um, it couldn't have a lot of the uh, associated noise that we uh, have with a Telecaster often when it's... Um, at high gain, um, and this has just worked out beautifully, so I'm, I'm pretty impressed with uh, Richard's work on this one. Yes, yeah, so obviously a big advantage of the humbucker design is that it eliminates a reasonable amount of that uh, hum which single coils uh, are generally unable to mitigate of themselves. Uh, there's also uh, some uh, foil shielding in the cavities just to give it a little bit extra coverage in that regard, um, but uh, yeah, the humbuckers by themselves do a pretty good job of removing a lot of that issue. And I guess the other thing I was really impressed with was um, the selection between the different pickups. Um, if, if I want something that's got a little bit more of that um, top end, uh, it's there. Um, but most of the time you just get those nice um, defined mid-tones, uh, which is really what I was, I was after. Yeah, so we have uh, in the bridge humbucker on this, a pretty strong uh, trebly sound, which is perhaps uh, a little bit unusual, but um, that's what these Mr. Fabulous pickups give us. So yeah, there's certainly a lot of versatility in this guitar. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that Richard was uh, disappointed when I asked him to make it in a road-worn uh, <laughs> finish. Um, so once again, that was a, a custom uh, custom shop, I guess. Um, so I'm, I'm he does uh, make guitars to order, um, but often with very beautiful finishes. Um, but for me, uh, I was really looking for something that I could take on the road and no one's going to notice when I dent it. Um, I, I have threatened to scratch it up a little bit more with some sandpaper and a few stickers, but I haven't quite followed through on that thread yet. <laughs> yeah, it was a little bit of a... Um, uh difficult experience for <laughs> taking the sandpaper to it after having painstakingly uh, polished and buffed it up to a nice fine gloss black finish but uh, the customer is always right as they say so uh, I didn't have much choice in this case um, 
it was uh, a case of less is more as far as I was concerned. So uh, it's got definitely some marks on it and the uh, uh, forearm wear, but uh, I didn't go too far to town. So I uh, look forward with interest to seeing what Chris does with it of his own accord. Um, now I'm going to let Richard uh, talk a bit more about it and um, play a bit of a demo for you uh, today. Um, and then I'll chat a bit more about uh, the recording chain, the amps, uh, the amp, the microphones used, and the mix down. Uh, so I'll hand it over to you, Richard. Thank you, Chris. Hi, this is Richard Gelbert from Imprint Guitars, and this week I'm uh, demoing one of my Metropolitan uh, custom electric guitars. This particular instrument is owned by a friend of mine, Christmas Brake, who commissioned it from me, and there'll be another video featuring a discussion with him about the design of the instrument. However, uh, for the purpose of this week, we're just going to be demonstrating the sound, but first a quick description of the guitar from top to bottom. We have Goto Clouson style tuners, a bone nut, medium frets, twin mini humbucker pickups by Mr. Fabulous, hard tail bridge, dual uh, three position pickup switching with master tone and volume control. On the rear instrument we have string through ferrules, control cavity access and a bolt on neck. As you'll notice from the paintwork has been lightly distressed to give it a bit of a road worn finish and that is a solid black nitrocellulose finish. The body is a two piece mahogany, the neck is American Naple and the fretboard is Paduk. Okay, so we'll begin by demonstrating the sound of each of the pickups in isolation, starting with the neck pickup with zero tone position. Switching to the bridge pickup, again starting at zero tone position. And now both pickups together, again starting at the zero tone position.
So that was the Imprint Guitars Metropolitan electric guitar model. Thanks for your attention and thanks for watching. My thanks to Christopher Sprake of Last Match Recordings for audio visual production. You can find me on Facebook. Where else? See you next time. The guitar was recorded through a Princeton reverb amplifier using a Coles 4038 Rude microphone and a Neumann U87. Both microphones were run through a Neve 1073 preamp before going into distressor compressors in a stereo linked pair. Gentle EQ was applied through the Toft mixing desk before it hit the Antelope Audio Orion 32 Plus converters and into Cubase for mixing. Um, so thanks again Rich for that demo, um, I mean that sounds amazing um, and it certainly uh, is better to have an experienced guitarist uh, rather than someone who uh, really writes for the song uh, rather than being experienced on the instrument playing it. So. Um, thanks again. Um, so Richard's company is called Imprint Guitars. You can find them on Facebook uh, or you can drop a message on this video uh, or through the website for the studio uh, if you'd like to find more about the guitars. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Thank you.